Okay. Uh, my next guest starred in Dempsey and Makepeace, a television series in London, which was seen in over 60 countries. Now he co-stars as Teddy on a new comedy series called Home Fires, which is on NBC Saturday nights at 8.30. Please welcome Michael Brandon. Hey. Just moved back from London, eh? Just got in. Yeah. We just got a house. In fact, I would have brought my wife, but she's unpacking boxes and dealing with all kinds of workmen who I'm happy showed up. Yeah. So I think it's always best to leave the wife dealing with burly workmen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> straw dogs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like straw dogs at the house. <laughs> so, <laughs> she's holding uh, on. No, oh, she's good. nice and pregnant, and uh, oh. know, so they're taking nice care of Kind of an old-fashioned guy, huh? Yeah. yeah. You know. <laughs> So doing a show, and you're from you're from Brooklyn, though originally. Right? Brownsville, Brooklyn. That's right. There's yeah. nobody here from there. No. You know that's what that's what always makes me laugh. When, when America, when English come in, come over here, English people, they try to be so English. And the Bronx accent is probably the most American-sounding accent to yeah. to to Englishmen. Do you find yourself being even more American, more Bronxy? When well, you're with? actually, I, I was hanging out with all these English people, and I never noticed that I had an accent. I thought I talked just like them. <laughs> yeah. So. It, it sort of went the same, you know. I mean, they liked it, and that's what worked very well. And then it sort of drifted away, and then it come back. And sometimes I would forget. I'd start saying things like, uh, well, did you book for dinner? You know, things like that. And right. then I'd have to go in the corner because I was playing this New York cop, and I'd start cursing, you know, like at a cab driver. I'd pretend that, and then I'd go back to work. Oh, I see. I see. Well, I, well, I always like watching English shows. I think I mentioned this before one time, because they would have English actors do American accents. Right. So they would sound like Americans until I was watching one of the shows at Mass Peace Theater one night, and this guy was obviously an Englishman doing America. He comes, he goes, "Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm Detective So and So." He looks at some food and he goes, "Aha! Well, I see he ate the crispy bits." <laughs> <laughs> you know, like an American would say that. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. very odd. The but food was something else. Yeah, they get those little yeah, bacon rolls, you know, and all that starch and that kind of stuff. Yeah. Bubble and squeak. You ever have that? Exactly. Uh, dessert. Yeah. <laughs> Bubble and squeak is what? It's like cabbage and something. Something awful. You put it. Oh. I'm about what um, black pudding. They said I thought it was like something like brownies. That's what it looked like. Yeah. I took a bite and I was, what is this? It's dried pig's blood. <laughs> <laughs> who would eat that? Oh, look at the the crowd. I mean, who would eat that? Watery. I was spitting for two days. When you get these here, would you like a giant tomato? You <laughs> like this. But you're a big star over there, right? The show was huge. It was huge. It was in 60 yeah. countries. Like in France, it was Mission Cascu. In Spain, it was Como Pedro de Gato. I mean, I know I spoke that many languages. Oh, yes. You know, but it, it was. It was a great success. And I stayed for seven years. And they dub your, your voice in and they just... Yeah, You're very beautiful, my dear. <laughs> yeah. It's the same guy. The well, same guy in every different language. It was great. And you married your co-star on the show, is that I right? I did. I did. So you didn't know her before you started the series? No, we, we, uh, we met uh, when I went over there to mm -hmm. do the show. And uh, we set up a tea at the Ritz Hotel. I came in, and I was working on the character for about a week. I was really getting to be this chauvinistic slob, loudmouth, and uh, she was very demure and very, you know, English. And we're in the Ritz Hotel, and I sit down, hey, how you doing? You know, and she starts talking to me, and the phone was ringing, and I said, would somebody answer that? She, she started to crawl behind the table. Yeah, not. No. She's, uh, her worst horror. I was this brash, ugly American. And, uh, you know, I'd say, well, what do you want to do later? You want to come back, you know, a cup of coffee or a shower? <laughs> and that was it. I mean, we, did, we started off hating each other. Yeah. Has that line ever worked, I wonder? <laughs> no, it didn't work. But, we, you know, the relationship sort of went on. <laughs> It was sort of mellow. I mean, we would end up standing on location somewhere in these beautiful English countryside. to yeah. do these big castle, you know. And I'd be standing there, you know, sort of in the character. And I said, you know, if I lived in those days, I would have been a knight in shining armor. And she'd look at me and say, if you lived in those days, you'd have been shining the armor at night. <laughs> oh, yeah, she would. Oh, yeah, good, good shot, yeah, good shot. Yeah, I mean, it kept so us then, going. So then it grew, and then you got married? And then... Well, we didn't, yeah, we'd exactly get married then. Uh, what happened was we sort of were together apart. I mean, the press were loving this whole thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it was, it was, they're notorious over there, oh, as yeah. you know what's going on now. Anyway, um, we sort of split up for almost a year, and I... But still working together. Well, yes, which was really bad, and then we had a break, and I came back to the States uh, to see some friends, and I was sort of the needy guy, you know, when you get that smell of death on you? I mean, if you talk to a girl, she'll sleep with the guy over there, you know? <laughs> anyway, uh... I think so, yeah. yeah. 
But anyway, I, yeah. I, I was, that's how I was feeling, and I, I, but she already found a new guy. I mean, nine months had gone by oh. at this point. So she uh, found this guy, and he was really out Would there. Would this be Broad Bottom or somebody like Some, that? Some, you know, yeah, and sending big guys. jewels and all this kind of stuff. Jewels, and, yeah. Yeah, so they were going down to the Gloucestershire, to the countryside, where we always went to this couple's oh, house. Boy. Taking them to the same place, yeah, right? I mean, boy. that's what, So uh, I had this jacket. It was a bomber jacket that I loved, and she wanted it, but I didn't give it to her. It was split up. Yeah. So I, uh, I put a ring in the pocket. I packaged it up, and I sent it to the house in Gloucestershire, and it was under the tree. So Christmas came, she opened it up, saw the jacket, found the ring, and he was history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you are. Nice. There you are. <laughs> now we're gonna have a bed. Oh, there you go. Did you ever get married in the interim anyway? We did, we did get married. We got married, and uh, we, we did uh, what they, they, you have to go to the, uh, we got married in London, and right. you have to go to the, um, the town hall. And they always know, because somebody gets paid off in the town hall to tell when you're going to be married. Oh, well, they do like in Vegas when yeah, somebody yeah. And then everybody yeah, shows up. Yeah. But then they call you another person who gets paid off, who wants to get paid off. He tells you how to come in the back door. And you can avoid all that. It's oh, a I whole see. game. So you keep paying all yeah, the way. Exactly. You pay off, you pay oh, off. Right. And you met the royal family, too, I understand. Yeah. We meet them a lot, actually, because we did a lot of charity stuff over yeah. there. You know, the, like the Americans, the English are very involved in helping their own. And, yeah. Uh, we, so we teach each other charity dues or this and that, and uh, they're great. They're really a lot of fun. I did a photo exhibition, actually, um, for Prince Charles's charity yeah. and raised a lot of money. So they invited us to Buckingham Palace. It was, this was great. You know, they did the mirrors under the car and all the security. Right, right. And then we went to a concert. And uh, after the middle of the concert, actually, they say, you come back to this tent, and you stand at the head of this line, and Di will come in the side, Charles will come in the side, they'll talk you. their way up, and they'll come to talk to you. So I, I was standing there practicing, you know, we're not good at bowing Americans. No, Americans don't bow yeah, well. So, no. like so anyway, they, uh, she gets to me first, the princess, and uh, we start talking, and she looks down and she sees this tie I got, which was given to me by Prince Charles's charity right. with the crest, and she says, you're wearing that tie? I said, yes, and she goes, it's naff. I said, naff, naff. Ugly. Not good, Not ugly, good. Yeah. really stupid to wear. I said, oh, yeah, so I go like this and I'm pulling it off just as Charles arrives. He says, oh, you're wearing my tie. <laughs> I said, yeah, I was just fixing it up like this and uh, <laughs> she's like this and behind his back. It's a setup. Set up. They had a great sense of humor, they actually were. <laughs> Very now we nice. have a clip here from the show here. Let's let's put the monitor up. Oh, uh, home fire? Yeah, yeah. This, you know what this clip is? Does it need any setting up here? Yeah, yeah, it does need a little bit. Home, it's a... Uh, this show, uh, I don't want to give away what happens on tomorrow night, right. um, but a bizarre event takes place and my son is now dealing with my mortality. You know, right. we never think our parents are going to die. Right. Mine aren't. Mine aren't. No. They're right, folks. <laughs> anyway, um, he's sort of sticking close. Right. So I open the bedroom door in the morning and... Uh, Let's take a look. Home fires. Hi. Good morning. Is that my shirt? Yeah. Can you give me a ride to school today? Why? You always take your bike. Yeah, but the chain's broken. Okay. So what are your plans for the day? Oh, I thought I'd go to work, earn some money, feed the family. You're a funny guy. Is there something I can do for you? Nope. Okay, the show is Home Fire. It's on tomorrow night uh, at 8.30. Michael Brandon. Michael, thank you. Be right back. Coming up, more music with Melissa Heatherage. We're all getting together and deciding to wear jeans tonight. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Michael Brandon, the show was on tomorrow night. Um, what is it? I, 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 I'm fires. I'm fires, of course. Life goes out. I'm thinking of your show. Uh, Melissa, uh, this is your CD, uh, Never Enough. And, uh, and of course, uh, there you go, right here. And uh, Kelly Martin. Uh, 
Life goes on. That's your show. Next week, Eddie Murphy will be here. Kim Basinger, Paula Poundstone, Grand Show, Christian Leitner, Joey Lawrence, D.B. Sweeney, uh, McLaughlin, James Taylor, and Vogue. They might be giant. Tons of stuff. furnished by the Universal City Hilton and Towers, ideally located within steps of the studios, close to everything that matters, yet above it all. If you'd like tickets to The Tonight Show, write to The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, NBC Tickets, 3000 West Alameda Avenue, Burbank, California, 91523.